<laughs> this video is based out of Hahe on the Coromandel's east coast. A break in the weather provided surprisingly good inshore conditions. After swimming out along the peninsula and initially not finding much, I come up to quite a large school of bait fish and drop down below to see if I can find anything. After waiting for a while and not really seeing much, I turn and manage to see the snapper before turning around again with my gun and taking a shot at him. Pretty good way to start things off, can never really not be stoked with shooting a snapper. I did admittedly get very lucky with this fish. When he saw me I had the sun facing towards me which is pretty much the opposite of what you want. You want it behind you so it's casting a shadow over and they can only see your silhouette. Usually in that kind of a scenario a snapper would bolt almost immediately but this one stuck around just long enough for me to get a shot into him. No more than 50 meters away I find a John Dory potentially brought in by the commotion. Most John Dorys that you encounter will turn side on to face you, very broadside, but this one wasn't having any of that. You do get the odd one that tries to go for it. John Dory is always a welcome addition to the float boat and a guest to the dinner table. As I was ickying and bleeding my John Dory, I had actually cut my shooting line and my spear had gone down to the bottom. So I had to make a dive and recover it. I was really lucky, I managed to find it pretty much the first drop, but you've got to be careful in these kind of situations. Whether you have gear or fish at the bottom of the ocean and there's a chance of losing it, you can feel quite compelled to make dives quickly and try to cover that as quickly as you can. But in situations like that, you've got to be real careful and take your time on the surface. And just be safe. Love to dive another day. Here I am tying my shooting line back together. I kind of switched between using Mono and Dyneema for my shooting line, but definitely the main advantage of Dyneema is being able to tie knots in it. With Mono, if you cut it, you're pretty much buggered, like you can't do anything about that. But with Dyneema, if you have the know-how, you can fix that quite easily. Yeah, cool, just take it easy. It's a bit bloody churny at the moment. Yeah, it's not too bad though, this is alright. The conditions weren't ideal, but definitely surpassed expectations, due to a week of bad weather beforehand. I was looking for butterfish this day, and was actually having a surprisingly hard time tracking them down. My dive buddy had seen quite a few, but I wasn't really running into them. Here we've got a cool little rock, with a bunch of crayfish living underneath it. Only in a couple meters of water, like less than five probably. I don't go out of my way pretty much ever to find crayfish. I don't find it as rewarding as tracking down and shooting fish. I'm honestly not a huge fan of crayfish eating wise. I prefer just normal fish. A lot of times when I find crayfish I'll just try one grab at them and if I don't get them on that I just leave them. I'm not really about putting my hand in there and ripping them apart trying to get them out of their hole. Crayfish are under a lot of fishing pressure as well, so it's worth taking that into consideration. Eventually I run into the only legal butterfish I'd seen all day. As I approach this pillar, and he sees me and takes off initially, and goes down sort of into the valley. Butterfish live in the kelp pretty much all the time, so it's no surprise as they're good at hiding in it. Many a time, when a butterfish goes into the kelp, you'll never see it again. I try my best not to miss, but hey, it happens sometimes. That said, there was a lot I could have done better. I find some fish over some exposed rock, dive down, and see this kingfish. Real rat, skinniest kingfish I've probably ever seen, and about only half a meter long. You will often see these blue mama and demoiselles at places where current's running, pushing up nutrients that they're feeding on. One of the most underrated fish right here is the humble leather jacket. These things are tasty as, but a lot of people look past them. Shortly after shooting the leather jacket, I see some kawaii from the surface, make a dive down, and a school moves in on me. I line up, still with the leather jacket on my shaft, and take a shot at one of the kawaii. It lands back a bit in the tail section, and quite high. Not an ideal shot at all. I'm trying my best to play this fish, but it's fighting really hard, trying its best to get me down into the reef. I can see my shot starting to tear out and decide to let the fish run to ground. A lot of the time, let's say if you shoot a snapper, you can let it go into the kelp and it will calm down and kind of stay there, but this kawaii didn't do that. 
Here I make the decision that I need to get down there and dispatch the fish. I'm not going to be able to play it on the spear. So I breathe up, make a dive down with my knife in hand and try to get towards the fish. But before I can do that he breaks off and swims free. I feel bad about it but this fish will be fine. It was only on the exterior part of his flesh. Swimming back in over some seemingly barren ground, I see a John Dory huddling next to a rock trying to avoid seeing me. I thought it was a weird looking leather jacket at first. So I dive down and let Ethan know so he can make a dive and try shoot it. You never really know when you're going to see a John Dory. Out on the sand, rocks, kelp, never know. Once you really get your iron for John Dory's, you'll start seeing them everywhere. It's just a matter of understanding what you're looking for. Shortly after, in a similar scenario, I see another John Dory. This one was significantly bigger than the other two earlier in the day, but very placid. I ready myself and thrust forward with all my will into the John Dory. Maybe this was karma for letting my friend shoot the other one. Maybe it was luck. Regardless, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video.